Meanwhile, former Baylor head football coach Art Bryle sat down with our Tom Rinaldi in his first television interview. Since being fired by the school, here is a clip from that interview. I made mistakes. I did wrong. Uh, but I'm not doing this, you know, trying to, to, to make myself, you know, feel better for apologizing. I understand I made some mistakes. There were some bad things that happened under my watch. I was the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship goes down with it. You know, so I understand that I've made some mistakes. And for that, I'm sorry, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm not trying to, to plead for, for people's sympathy. I'm just stating that, hey, I, I made some mistakes. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to learn. I'm going to get better. The whole Bryles interview will air on Saturday on College Game Day. Stephen A., do you believe him? <sighs> Not really. Um, if Art Bryles and his family were watching right now, here's what I would like to say. <clears throat> to me, Art Bryles is not the one who should be treated as if he is on trial for the transgressions of his players. Sexual assault, one dude was sentenced to 20 years. Some of the most heinous, despicable acts you can imagine against women, players in his program did. They are ultimately culpable for their actions. They're not children. They were young men. They knew better. They did wrong anyway. The believability factor or lack thereof that I'm attaching to Art Browns doesn't involve that. What it involves is that this stuff had been going on periodically with different players for years. It was all under your watch. You knew to some degree, at least, about it. You knew that there was a dereliction of duty you performed on your part in, ter in terms of dealing with it aggressively, which in a different regard, as it pertains to Joe Paterno and Jerry Sandusky, we could say the same thing. You knew it. There was a dereliction of duty in terms of putting forth your due diligence to remedy the situation, how it was affecting your program. And then here we are with an interview that is going to air on College Game Day with Tom Rinaldi this Saturday, September, what is it, 9th, 10th? Eighth. Okay, 8th, I'm sorry. Really? This has been going on for quite some time. We've never heard Art Browse like this. It's almost one of those things, Max, where it's so easy and so simple to simply say, damn, I dropped the ball. I should have done more. I could have done more. I, I really messed up in terms of how I handled it as a leader. No problem. But this resistance towards standing up and acknowledging as a leader how short you came up in all of this for so long until you clearly are politicking for another job is what resonates with me. Art Browse has been on this show in the past, Max, and he seemed to be a very nice man. He's a damn good football coach. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he succeeded Jason Garrett in Dallas because we know how much Jerry Jones loves him. But really, you're a leader of young men. And all you had to do was come out front and center. Look, you wasn't the one who sexually assaulted somebody. I got to get rid of this dude. I just found out about it. He's got to go. I apologize. And it's taken him so long to do that that I don't attach but so much sincerity because of that, because of the procrastination in which he, which he exercised in doing this interview with a Tom Rinaldi and owning up to what he didn't do. This is pure conjecture on my part. I'm just telling you how sure. it comes across to sure. me. Comes across to me that there, were, there must have been people around Art Ryle saying, look, you want to coach again, you have to apologize. And he seemed to be resistant to that because he felt he hadn't done wrong. In fact, he'd said so in the past. And finally, someone got through to him, it seems, or he, he heard the message just, you know, generally that if I want to coach again, I'm going to have to do a mea culpa. So he figured out a way here to apologize in a way that he could live with. He has to live with himself. That's an admirable trait. I'm not going to do something I don't really believe. 
A captain should go, shall go down with his ship. I could even hear him saying this to himself. Uh, okay, that's true. I am the captain of this ship. Bad things happened under my watch. I could apologize for that. Yeah, I could live with myself and apologize for that. And so he says it, but the way it came off is too little too late. It, I would have liked to hear if it was a sincere apology that understood the kind of um, message that I think people want him to hear. I would have liked to hear something a little more soul searching, like for example, ideally, something like, look, I never thought that I was contributing to a, to a culture that was permissive in this way, but obviously this was going on for a long period of time under my watch. Uh, um, I have to examine the kind of culture that I created where apparently some felt that this was permissible behavior and that they could get away with it. I would have liked to hear something more like that because to me that would have been more of an authentic internalizing of the message that he doesn't seem to be hearing. This seems to be more calculated. Look, if you want to coach, you got to apologize. Okay, how can I give a sincere apology where I can still look myself in the mirror and feel like I haven't sold myself out? Rather than just standing up and owning up to whatever it is you fell short of as a leader. Now, listen, we're talking about sexual assault. We're talking about other things. These are crimes against women by football players for this program. Molly, I would like to hear from you. You heard what we had to say about Art Browse. What are your thoughts? What I would love him to do is, obviously, you make a mistake and you have to own up to it. That's all you can do, whether it's sincere or not. I can't tell because I don't know the man. But what I really would have loved to him to see is do is put his money where his mouth is and, and in some way say, I'm going to work with the victims. I'm, I've learned all about this now. This happened under my watch. So here's what I'm going to do to kind of eradicate what I allowed that happen. And I think that would have really showed the public, like, wow, okay, this guy gets it, and now he's going to try to make a difference because of what he allowed. As, as a woman, mm -hmm. when you hear, because, again, He's not guilty of sexual assault. When you hear... You I'm, turned I, a blind eye to it, though. I'm, so I'm, to me... I'm coming to yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to yeah. ask a question. What I'm saying is, he's not guilty mm -hmm. of sexual assault. So what I am asking you is, because he's not the one who's actually guilty, it was the players. Mm -hmm. When you talk about what you want to see from him, I know that you're talking about his, you know, making a contribution, doing something along those lines. But what would you have liked to see him do? When would you have liked to have seen him do it? The Are we wrong by pointing out how procrastinated he has appeared in all of this? The first time that some incident happened with one of his football players and a female on campus, I would have liked him to address it differently and then dead it right then and not allow this to continue to happen repeatedly over and over. And because he go. did, at least take it a step further and at least look a little more involved than just a little, like, I'm sorry, to appear to just get another job again. And that's Steven's point, which I think ties mm -hmm. in to yours, I think it's directly proportional. The more you procrastinate before you hear the message that you right. gotta own it, maybe the larger, at the very least, the gesture has to be right. to show your sincerity in Good combating point, the culture that you help. Mm -hmm. You know, at the permissive culture Good that point. you contributed because to. Because based on what both of y'all are saying and what I'm saying, I gotta admit to you, I have no problem with him coaching in the NFL, but do I want him to head a college program with kids? I don't know about that. He, yeah, he has. I don't know. That I'm, not no. of, yes, I'm not saying that. no. I'm of saying no. I'm saying I don't men. know. You got to be a leader mm -hmm. in college. You got to be a leader of young men. Yep. In professional, you can sit there and say you're a grown man. You mm -hmm. get this check. You're accountable. But in college, you are the program. And I don't know if he can be trusted to do that, considering how difficult it is for him to just say, "Hey, I dropped the ball." Agreed. When we come back, after leaving the Redskins this offseason, under less than ideal terms, RG3 joins the Browns and gets a high honor before their season opener. We'll tell you what that is when First Take returns. First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by Sully, the untold story behind the miracle on the Hudson. In theaters tomorrow. And PlayStation View, live TV, no annual contract, and no surprise fees. You don't want to miss tomorrow's show. Stephen A. has a huge announcement for our First Take fans. Listen, people, this one, it's a game changer. Make sure you tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern right here 
on ESPN. I'm really too. getting an attitude with people here at first. Take, why do they keep showing these photos when I got a little belly? I've lost you are 12 so pounds. Right now. Might have had that. You might have I mean, bring around that belly. Belly. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, and damn, take, 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 take a current photo. Like three years? I, have I mean, a good that, idea. That, 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 that photo right there is more than two, three years Guess old. Guess what? I have a great idea. Why don't we take new headshots? Because I'd like a new one myself. How about that? You don't need could it. We get a, could we get a photographer? We need help. I mean, come on. The Browns announced on Wednesday that RG3 was voted by his teammates as one of the team's captains. After the announcement, Hugh Jackson was asked if he rigged the voting. Wow. They are 100% accurate. They're no, wow, I, that one almost went over my head. Donald Trump, Hugh Trump, no. Uh, no, I, I, we didn't do that. I, I looked at them. Uh, I did. I was a little surprised. I'll be very honest with you. I was surprised because obviously um, Robert hadn't been here very long. You know, and, and, and we haven't played a real football game yet. So uh, for him to be voted captain, I mean, um, it, it's, again, it's, uh, he should feel good about that. His teammates feel good about him. But, uh, no, we didn't rig that by no stretch of the imagination. Stephen A., your thoughts on RG3 being the L captain? First of all, I wouldn't put it past the Browns to have rigged it, okay? I don't think it would be necessary. Stop Let it. me finish. Let me go. Let me go. I wouldn't put it past them to have rigged it. Because guess what? If it were me, I would have. Here's why. Because that team needs to believe in RG3, and they need everybody to believe that folks are in that locker room believing in RG3. RG3 has been through a lot. I do not think it was rigged. I just think it would, I wouldn't put it past anybody for wanting this desperately to happen. Not because of his ability, Max, but because of all that he's been through. We need to reflect for a moment. RG3 has been through a lot. I can't say this enough. Do y'all have any idea what it feels like to be on a team, to be the franchise guy, to be the star, and to the point where with inside of two years, you are on that bench and they won't even allow you to wear a uniform? That was RG3 last year. So it's important that he got this captain's title. Once again, you want to rig voting? <laughs> you wanted to rig the judicial process before? No, no, no It's amazing not. that I can win every debate even though you try to rig this show. Please, please. Seriously, um, I think this shows that RG3 has matured as a player and person in the NFL. I do believe that uh, his teammates like him based on all the, you know, the comments you hear and the way from him and teammates in the preseason. Uh, he was humbled isn't exactly the right word because you, you would think he still remains confident in order for his teammates to this, have this kind of confidence in him. But he was one of the rare players who for a short time, no one can do it forever, but for a short time in the NFL was able to impose himself physically on the game. Eventually they adjust. It's too, there are too many great athletes, too many great smart athletes. You can't do it forever. And they adjusted to him. And then he was dealing with the injury. I think he's a fully or, or a much more mature player now. And I expect the Browns to surprise people. I think they're going to be better than people expect. Mm, you're taking them in the Eliminator Challenge. Off. We're tuning up the competition here. Yes, it's the first take Eliminator Challenge. Here are the rules, people. Each week, this NFL season, Max, Stephen, and I will pick our lock of the week, our team we think that will definitely win the matchup. If you choose correctly, you move on to the next week. If you are wrong, you are eliminated from the season-long competition. The catch is that once you choose a team, you cannot pick that team again. So let's kick things off with week one in ESPN.com's Eliminator Challenge. You are going with Max Kellerman. It's a great Even schedule, by the way, because a lot of evenly matched uh, yes. good matchups. Great Dolphins schedule. Dolphins at Seattle. I like Seattle at home as a lock. What about you, Molly? I'm going Seattle at home, too. He actually copied me. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> Yeah. So. yeah go Who knows with you, Molly? Yeah. Who knows? Oh. You know what I'm rolling with as my lock for the week? Oh. I'm rolling with the Kansas City Chiefs at home over the San Diego Chargers. Mm. It's in Kansas Risky. City, and it's a 1 o'clock game. They're out west. Yep. That's 10 in the morning to them. They're losing this game. Kansas City's winning this game. Arrowhead's I'm going with Kansas to play. City. And Seattle Arrowhead. is yeah. so tough to play. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's look, Miami. The Dolphins, the Dolphins will be improved, but look at some of these other matchups really evenly matched. And Seattle is good enough. You could have. I could have went Colts too. That was. I actually, could have gone too. Browns over Eagles at Philly. I don't. I think you weren't bold enough. I, I wish you did. Something. Change it by. I think.